good what time is it good morning everyone in the Tony barn sorry we had this perfectly framed and now my camera zoomed in really close so <laughs> let's oh <we're> <laughs> <laughs> let's reposition that a little because we've got to be let's come on jossie let's come, come back come, there we go okay Welcome everyone. Tall, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm always too short, so I'm pleased that I'm being cut off. Um, welcome everyone. I look like a um, Bond villain. Yeah. yeah. Bond villain. <laughs> um, we are here this morning because recently, through trainings with one-to-one -one clients, we've been doing a lot of work on identifying your ideal client, who that looks like, but more so what that means for your business. So I suddenly got really inspired this morning, um, seeing all our wonderful newsletters that are coming through written by this very talented girl here. <laughs> um, and I thought it's such a good, it's such a good process to go through for your business to identify who that wonderful person is that we'd like to work with every single day. Who do we want phoning up our studios and saying, please, can I book you for a photo shoot? And unless we do know what that person look like, looks like, we're not gonna know when they fall across us. So the easiest way to describe this to you is to go through this process with Joss. So no pressure at all, Joss. <laughs> I'm not <But> <laughs> I, <laughs> And I really want you guys to uh, grab a pen and piece of paper and write this down for your own circumstances because it's going to take you a long way in getting your business ship shape. And as you all know, we say this, your ducks in a row. So if we start with you, Joss. Yeah. If you could describe to me your ideal client, but someone who's already used you, who was the best client you've worked with to date? So I'd probably say it was a couple who run a livery yard um, about 20 minutes down the road from me. Fantastic. Now they didn't necessarily spend the most amount with no. me, but they, they just, that when I first approached them, they were quite sort of unsure. They sort of be like, we've had other photographers come and see us. But I popped around, showed them some of my frames. They went, oh, that's quite nice. And then I gifted them a shoot. Okay. So I walked them through the whole process. And again, I think they were still, you know, they were sort of like, okay, well, we'll just kind of see. But they were at the viewing. They loved the images. Okay, good. So that was really wonderful for me. In fact, there were no no's. Um, nice. They loved them and they just kept going, okay, we'll get a frame of this and a frame of that and a frame. Like, there was no... They so they just, did spend. They did spend. Yeah. Well, because yeah. how many frames did they buy? I think it was six in total. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, so what Joss is saying with, as far as spending is concerned, is because Joss was going through these guys as, let's call them influencers. And when Emily and I talk about influencers with the training barn, we don't mean the modern day influencers that are used on Instagram and, and Facebook and YouTube and TikTok, where people are given something free, literally just to promote it quickly to their audience and you have to hashtag ad. We don't mean that as influencers. We mean people in the equestrian industry who, if they in passing said, I've had a photo shoot with these people, whether they booked that shoot with Joss or Joss has connected with them in a different way, that it's it's a real honest relationship and recommendation. Now, I know that the influencers we see online don't necessarily use the shampoo that they're promoting and they don't necessarily wear the clothing that they're promoting. With our influencers, they've 100% been through the entire process. They've either loved the process or they haven't. And that does distinguish whether they are a valuable influencer to us or not. Because let me tell you, every influencer you contact may not love or value the entire experience. They may well be looking for someone who produces 100 images and sells them for £75. That's absolutely fine. There's a market there for those photographers and there's a market there for those buyers. That's not the market we're looking for. So we need to kind of tread through this mud and make sure that the people we're working with say, listen, it's going to cost you a fortune. You're going to have to remortgage your house. It's 100% worth it. Don't worry about it. You're going to have to get the credit card out. Those are the people who truly value what we're producing and don't question the price, which is what makes them an influencer. Wow, going all the way back <laughs> to my original point of when Josh said they weren't huge spenders, it was because she had gifted them the session, yeah. which included... The discounted the... friends and family price list. Excellent. Yeah. And did you include a frame or a set of digitals? So I included a 16-inch frame. Amazing. And I will say this, guys, if your budget allows for it, always include something that's tangible, something that they can hold and love forever. 
Now, if your budget doesn't stretch to it, it's absolutely fine to include three, five, 10, 50, however many digitals you deem that influencer is, is going to value. Because the thing is with a true influencer, they need to know that if they don't spend a penny with you, they have walked away with something very valuable and they would still recommend you. Because remember, even if they don't spend, doesn't mean their circle of friends wouldn't spend with you. That, you know, people's finances are different, but if they're in the same circle, you know, then it can be, they can be influential. So they got a frame that was included, yep. the full shoot, and yep. you took them from start to finish through the whole experience. Yep. Okay, we're not gonna get too far into that today because otherwise I'm gonna be here for an hour and a half. <laughs> what I wanna go over is what happens when we look at the ideal client. And if we get a piece of paper, let me grab my folder. I always need to sort of, I always need to pretend I'm really doing this because otherwise I sort of, I mean, you guys would never believe I'd lose track of things and get off course. <laughs> <laughs> right, am I still in frame? Yes. So let's name her. Don't give her real name. Let's name yeah. her. What should we call Let's call her Mary. Okay. okay. So Mary and her husband, John. Yeah. Wow, well, those are... <laughs> middle class white people aren't they <laughs> oh mary and john with their horses so mary and john are our ideal clients so what does their house look like joss so their their house they actually built it themselves nice um, there so you go. it's custom to what they want um it's got plenty of wall space um, nice i love that literally right next to the yard okay so they have an at-home yard yeah now do they take any other liveries or is it all their horses uh, they have other liveries, um, okay. uh, so but it's a mix of their horses and other liveries. Okay, and let's just say he's going to do it. He's going to do it. <laughs> my cat gets re one of my cats gets very jealous when I go live or I'm on a Zoom and embarrasses me. So they have outside liveries. Yeah. How many would you say? Let's give them a. You know, would you say it's five or is it forty? I'd probably say somewhere in the middle so that it's they're offering quite a personal experience. It's not so let's say 20, 20 horses yeah. on livery. How many horses have they got themselves? Um, let's say at least three. Nice. Okay, so they've got three horses. Okay, so we're going to dig deep into this because the more we can learn about this client, the better our marketing can be. So if they've got three horses, have they got a lorry? Have they got a trailer? What's at home? Uh, so I would say that they probably have a small, at least a small, nice lorry. Yeah, um, with a bit of living or, you know, yeah. some sort of space. Small lorry, what do they drive, each of them? Um, I'd probably say something in the Range Rover. Yeah, then. okay, so let's put a nice 4x4. Four four. And and does John or Mary have a sports car hidden in a... In a yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. And a sports car because you know these people legitimately do. <laughs> yeah, but the thing and yeah. and the thing is, we shouldn't we we you know we don't we don't tar everyone with the same brush. Mm. We don't judge everyone for the same settings. But when you start looking at at these people, they definitely have the same tick boxes mm -hmm. in in quite a few areas. And it's really important to understand that. And it's not because we're judging them any differently. It's just that. Those, that's what happens in those circles. It's the same as photographers. If you ask an equine photographer, you know, so what lens do you shoot with? It's not a surprise that most of us shoot with a 7200. There's a reason why most of us. Now, yes, I've got a 35 mil, I've got a 50 mil, you know, uh, Emily's got an 85 mil on her Leica. There are different types, but the majority of photographers, equine photographers who do portraiture are gonna say a 7200. It's exactly the same as the perfect client for an equine photographer. So we've done the cars. Let me. What do they do with those horses? Those three horses. So I'd say um, they do take them out competing. Yes. Um, Are they dressage, eventing? Probably dressage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we've got dressage now. Moving on from the disciplines, do they train other people in dressage, or are they trained by their peers or? Um, so I'd, I'd probably say my ideal client would be Let's going take to, them. yeah, would be going to, you know, they'd be like, oh, I'm going to go, you know, have a have, lesson with Carl. Oh, you yes. Know, okay. And, so um, they have a trainer. Yeah. Now, just out of interest with the couple that you yeah. saw, do they train horses on their yard? Yes. 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 So they have a trainer, but they also train others. And again, that is two tick boxes I'm looking for. The type of client I work with day in day out definitely have a trainer and it is someone like Carl Hester mm. but they are also at a, a high enough level that they've got people coming to them 
for a 20 minute to an hour's lesson um, because they've reached a certain level in their discipline. So again, it's quite important. Now, when you're building your, because we can go, this can take about an hour and a half, which we're not gonna do today. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you're building your profile, I want you to really think about, you know, what else do they have in their home? Do they have anyone helping in their home? So if they've got children, how many children do they have? Now, do they have, and I hate what the word staff, but do they have a help at home? So that could be a housekeeper, could be a cleaner, it could be a groom for the yard. So, and you need to go, or you need to dig deep, as deep as you possibly can go. So moving on to there, we're gonna look at the marketing that might hit Mary and John. So where do Mary and John hang out, you know, on a summer weekend? Are they going to nice pubs or are they going to the Hunt Ball? Are they going to Burley and Blenheim? Are they not interested in that at all? They're going to the Nationals. Are they flying? Are they skiing? What sort of level are our clients? What, what are they doing? So I promise you they're either competing at top level competitions or they're spectating at them. Um, nice. you know, um, and you know, they're in the VIP tent at Bamford. Nice. And, you know, or they're by the lake and that sort of thing. That would be the place that they'd be. I love that. That's it's that's such an important part that Joss has just recounted is that they'll be in the VIP tent. Because if you can get yourself um, into the VIP tent being that you've got a frame on the wall or maybe you've just got a, a little corner where you can put a little stand up, which absolutely you can all do. You can all approach the VIP tents at Land Rover and if they want some artwork, produce, I, I've done it, I know Emily's done it. We It's basically an exhibition in the VIP tent, but you're making the VIP tent even more special by hanging your work. So it's definitely one to, um, um, think about when you're looking at your ideal client. So where are they hanging out with their friends? What, what, what's, what's Mary doing for um, downtime? So she's definitely a lady who lunches. So yes. it'll be at maybe the local hotel and spa, um, having afternoon tea with her friends. Spa, um, afternoon tea, yes. Yeah. That's what I'd like to So say. she, and I would say from, from hearing about Mary, she's, she's unfussy because mm -hmm. people with horses just mm. tend to be unfussy. However, she's obviously valuing mm -hmm. the higher things in life and time for herself. Yeah. So she looks after herself. The person you're thinking of right now, Mary, mm -hmm. she takes time for herself. Yeah. She looks after herself. She gets a haircut. Yeah. Yeah. So she just looks after herself. Now, give me an idea of what magazine she'd be reading. Um, country Living, um, House and Country, Vogue. Um, Tatler, um, possibly picking up a horse and hound once in a while. It's a funny one, isn't it? Because I always think that we 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 talk a lot about glossy magazines and you know magazines that are between five and ten pounds each, and it's you know that's a no brainer for them. They want them on their coffee table, and they they genuinely are reading them in in bed or in the bath or whatever. But for every horsey person, there's that sort of. But I've got to have a horse and hound, yeah. <laughs> and and I don't. And I think the horse and hound is so clever how they've you know, created this bubble of trust that no matter how they printed it or what the front cover image would be or, or who they're covering inside, mm. if you've got a horse, you feel like you should have the horse yeah. and hound. And it's otherwise, it? well, it really yeah. is. And I really feel like people have these conversations. They say, did you see that in the horse and hound? And if you mm. say, no, I haven't picked up the horse and hound in 10 years. Does she really have a horse then? <laughs> She's faking it. I don't think so. So it is, it, and as an equine photographer, even if, even if you don't have a horse, it's important that you do read the magazines and read the literature that the equestrians are reading because you you need to have these conversations and you need to know what the sort of marketing looks like that that's hitting this market so you can see where i'm going here guys you can see that we start where this person lives we start what they do with their horses how many horses they have and what sort of engagement they have with other equestrians it's it's really important uh, up to this point is there are there any questions on anything we've covered so far with narrowing down your ideal client. Um, when you do do this, I would also suggest that you look into, um, not look into their finances, but <laughs> give an idea, write it down. I mean, no one really knows anyone's finances, mm. but you know, if I'm describing my perfect client, and funnily enough, my perfect client is not normally English. Now they could be someone from America 
or Russia or Dubai or Abu Dhabi who is living in England currently because their works brought them over here or that they were living in England, they have moved back to their home country, but they're actually going to fly me out because they love the English, the English way of photography. It's kind of kooky to them to fly an English photographer out. You know, I'm sure in their country, of course, I mean, no one does. <laughs> no one can do what I do. No one can do what Joss does. No one can do what any of you guys do because it comes from our heart, our creativity, our soul and our eyes. But I do know that there's definitely a thing where they love to say, oh, no, I'm flying my photographer out. She's the only person I would ever use, you know, and it, it's good. It's good. But if I'm looking at their finances and I'm taking a guess, you know, my clients are definitely going to be millionaires and they're going to have a big disposable income. You know, when they make a purchase of, say, 10 to 15,000 pounds, the wife wouldn't necessarily have to call the husband about that. Let me tell you, I have to call my fiance if I'm going to make a purchase like that I mean obviously not not I no obviously I'm not making that purchase not that I'm not asking him <laughs> I mean that's not necessarily true but um it's a really good idea so for Mary and John you might say that let's say John has nothing to do with horses he rides at the weekend but John is say in finance in London you're going to estimate that he's probably got a £300,000 a year wage um, all in. Now, that could be untrue. It could be 50000 It could be 20000 It's not, It's not up to us. However, we need to understand that that level of client, when they're spending two or £3,000 with us, it's not as big a deal as if we were spending £3,000 on something. You know, I don't go to badminton and see a pair of boots for £500 and buy them without thinking about it. I, that's not my level of financial freedom. It's not my disposable out, outgoings. But that doesn't mean that I don't work for clients who absolutely would buy two pairs because they couldn't choose which colour they wanted. So you've got to come out of your own head of what you would do and get into your client's head, which is why we need to write down exactly who Mary and John are, where they've come from, where they live, how they live, how they treat their horses, what they do with their horses, where they spend money. Now, the next, the last and the most important thing is, what do Mary and John value? I'd say experiences. Lovely. Um, and quality. Nice. So whenever anyone asks me this question, for my ideal client, I always say my clients value time over everything. Time with their horse, time with their family, so the more I can do to eliminate the amount of time and work my client has to put into a photo shoot, the better I will connect to my ideal client. Because they, they don't really want to be jumping through hoops. Like even if I sent them a questionnaire to fill out about their styling, that would impeach on the, their biggest value, which is time. So how can I eliminate, because I still need those answers from a questionnaire, but if I know who I'm talking to, I know that I have to reach out to them and maybe book a, can I pop in for a coffee and then we can design your photo shoot together? Or should we have a quick phone call? Should we have a quick Zoom call? Now, most people can find 25 to 45 minutes for a phone call, Zoom call, or a quick coffee. But you know what, when that questionnaire is sat in your email inbox, but there's 50 emails above it and there's 50 emails below it, it feels like your photographer is therefore taking time away from you. So if I know that she values time, I've circumc circumcised it. <laughs> I didn't I knew you'd do something. <laughs> I've circumvented. You see, I try to use fancy words. And I should just say, I got over the bridge. No, yeah. I circumvented that problem because I don't send them a questionnaire. But if your ideal client loves having... Oh, thanks, Imogen. <laughs> Um, if your client, so your client values experiences and value. Mm -hmm. So if you know that Mary and John over everything, maybe they've got a couple of children mm -hmm. and you know that they, the experience is what they want. Why not give them a four hour photo shoot, which includes a picnic lunch? Mm -hmm. Why not say we can do two locations, one at your home yard, but do you have a favorite hack that you would jump in the lorry for? And it's really important you understand all of this because when you start saying that to your ideal client, they're brand new, they've contacted you through Instagram or they've been recommended by someone. And the first thing you say is, look, it's really important that you understand that the way I work links into your life. 
and your values. So if I were Joss and I was talking to Mary's best friend, I'd say, okay, the first thing I'd like to ask you is, do you have a special location that you would take your horse that you love, right? Maybe it's the Bluebell Woods. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, 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 no, we, we definitely do that. In fact, me and the girls go up there every May and we take a picnic. Oh, we, we should try and incorporate that in the shoot because if, if you've done that every year with your horse for, say, the last six years, it would be a shame to not actually capture that in a beautiful portrait situation. So why don't we do half the shoot at your yard and half the shoot at the Bluebell Woods? And do you want a couple of your girlfriends to join you? Maybe we could make it a bit of an afternoon because what you're doing is you're tapping into their values which for you Joss mm -hmm. is their experience mm -hmm. some of my uh, clients values are the fact that I will jump on a plane and I will go so I will take five days in Boston to do one photo shoot I mean that's just me being a diva <laughs> <laughs> however my clients actually tap into that they quite like that you know I'm not gonna go to Boston for five days and try and do five photo shoots because suddenly what they value time luxury the experience suddenly that's dropping off i'm cutting cutting those down because i'm i'm trying to do too much which doesn't align with my clients values so now that you've got a good overview this this bit might hurt you when you look at it because we've got all these lovely notes and all these lovely things and there's two things you're going to do from here one is a marketing list and one is a business and an analyzation analysis a business <laughs> analysis was so close to you know <laughs> it, was, it wasn't rude this time <laughs> so first of all let's do the hard bit the business analyzation <sighs> i don't know what my phone's doing well, at least Hang it's on. not me let me <laughs> yeah um it, you need to look at your business and from the outsider point of view say what does my business look to my ideal client so joss i'm going to put you on the stop oh, no, no, I, I didn't tell her i was going to do this <laughs> If Mary and John look at your business right now, mm -hmm. and, and, and look, I, you know, let's all be very kind to Josh because this is putting her actual business, you know, in front of seven, eight hundred people. Mm -hmm. But what I do want you to do is if Mary and John look at your business right now, are there any holes or is there anything you could do that might tap into what they're looking for right now? How do they see your business? So I'd say that um, in terms of my portfolio, yeah. I'd say there's a few gaps in terms of locations. So I've got lots of lovely photos of sort of teenage, you know, girls with their ponies and that sort of thing. And yeah. a handful of more sort of, um, you know, sort of 40s, 50s, that kind of yes. age. Glamorous ladies, basically. Yes. So I'd say I'm missing probably a few of the glamorous ladies and um, and that sort of really beautiful home yard. Um, home, home yard kind of gotcha kind of thing so that would be the one thing that um in my portfolio that would be missing okay so gap in your portfolio if they were to come across you at a show mm -hmm. or be recommended by someone who happened to have a brochure or a postcard mm -hmm. are those things aligning with these people so at the moment most of my marketing material is digital so i'm aiming to basically make it so it's a tactile thing because i know i love to feel the quality of things like yeah. every time i go into the shop i will feel every like the magazine item. you buy the yeah. magazine even though it's 9.99 but because it feels, oh my god it's yeah. so good yeah. yeah and um so i i want them to be able to hold something and look at something and go okay that's quality and um so I your marketing yeah. materials yeah just want to do the next step up yeah so you're upgrading yeah, yeah. so emily and i have a, a a saying that we say all the time upgrading our lives and it could you can start with, you know, what do you wear to a photo shoot, you know, to, to you know, what are you driving, what shoes, you know, do you wear Dubarries or do you wear a pair of wellies? Um, and, and, and it's always looking to upgrade your life. Now, it's not necessarily spending money because, you know, the car is a big buck, you, you know, once you've invested in that car, but you can still upgrade your life by keeping your car clean and you can clean it yourself. So that's not costing you money. Um, but that is upgrading your life to match with your with your clients' values because they do want you to turn up in a clean car with a nice outfit on. You know, you need to look professional. Your kit must be clean. Have a nice kit bag. And you, again, you know, if, if the finances aren't there at the moment, make a list of these things and look on Facebook Marketplace, look on eBay, look on Vintage. You know, they're, they're all out there to, you know, takes a bit more work than going to a shop and just buying a pair of Jabari's. But that's kind of the joy in, in cheating the system is that I am running to keep up with everyone else, but 
I'm gonna get there. And I, you know, guys, I don't know, you know, if you know my story, I literally came from nothing. I had zero savings to start my equine photography business and nothing deterred me, nothing stopped me. But I was, made, you know, every pound I made went against paying my rent, my council tax, my electric bill, you know, it, it really did, it, it really was a labor of love, but nothing stopped me. But every time I needed to upgrade my life to match my current profile, sorry, this jumper is so unflattering. Um, every time I needed to do it, I would find a clever way of doing it. So I would go and do cheaper shoots that had nothing to do with equine photography. So I did because I didn't want to ever cheapen my product, but you know, I would contact the local country pubs and the local B and B's, and I would say, "Do you want a, a two-hour photo shoot?" And it includes all the images, three hundred pounds. I'll come and photograph the food in the pub, the pub's atmosphere, the outside of the pub, and staff. And they were like, "Well, yeah, that's great for all our marketing and our website." But every time I did it, it was three hundred pounds in my bank account, and then I could get my nice camera bag, I could buy my Lulu lemons. So, and don't let the word upgrade stop you from actually figuring out what the smaller steps are. So like your marketing materials, yes, you want them in print, but actually at the moment, you've got them in digital format. So you're still hitting the tick box. Mm -hmm. But the next step is, well, which one's more important? So if we take some of my printed mm -hmm. materials, you know, this is my brochure, which is... <laughs> fancy it's so pretty. Um, you know and it's got um an embossed gold um front it's even got the um you know tracing paper inlay i mean these are not the proper words for all these things vellum, vellum. vellum that's right and it's all be beautiful nice styling guide in there and it's just got a fancy um textured paper front and it's perfectly bound rather than stapled or stitched but again i could have saved myself a lot of money doing staple to stitch i've then got these lovely sort of um start to finish what what happens on a photo shoot with me that goes in my welcome pack i've got a, a leather case that goes i've got another vellum which you know it says that um the gift that lasts a lifetime reserve your date it's all sort of fancy and then a nice thick um postcard but if i look at all of it really which one's the most important is it my brochure well that can be sent digitally plus you're likely to get the brochure once you've booked the mm -hmm. shoot so that could be number two or three on the list is it the run through of what we what's going to happen on a photo shoot well that's actually not that expensive even though it's on nice paper that's not that expensive so that could go in there okay that would be nice to give someone who makes an inquiry i would say your very nice thick postcard is your most important right now because as soon as someone says can i just take something so i can have a look at your website or you know you just want to write a thank you for your inquiry please include in, find enclosed a letter you know this sort of says what i'm doing is is high high grade it's a wonderful experience you're sort of solidifying their trust in you um and the more you can do in in things like that like adding in the leather pouch and you know i've even got um you know ribbon with my name on and i've just invested oh, in oh, so, cool. <laughs> so this is just box tape so you just wet the other side put it on the box but when the box arrives they can start getting excited because, and, and you know, I mean, guys, that cost me like 40 quid for 80 meters or something. You just, you've got to spend some time Googling and uh, finding, what, you know, but the first thing to do is clarify who your ideal client is and what they value. And then you need to tick those boxes. So if, a, if Mary and John look at your business from the outside point of view, you're gonna update your portfolio mm -hmm get that perfect, update your marketing materials. Is there anything else, let's say your price? Mm -hmm. So Mary and John have a sports car, have a four by four, have a lorry, have three horses, probably have 20 liveried horses. Their monthly bills are gonna be in the tens of thousands, mm -hmm. probably 10,000 if not more. A month is spent running their lives, just without them moving or eating or driving anywhere, it's over ten thousand pounds. Now, if your shoot is ninety five pounds, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's not. It's not. But the reason I'm saying this is, if it's ninety five pounds, Mary and John won't look at it and go, "What a bargain!" Mm -hmm. Oh my God, we'll have three. Yeah. 
their initial response because they're used to spending money will be mm, maybe she's not right for us maybe oh uh, because no she's probably it's just probably going to include some digitals or something we we really wanted a frame because you know they see other marketing going out there and then they do fall across the the relationship that keeps forever the photographer they keep forever so mary and john you do need to understand once you've looked at their profile what do they want to see as a price now joss is 395 pounds yep. that falls perfectly in line for session only including a frame but Mary and John would look at, okay, it's 400 pounds. Well, yeah, that's what it costs me to insure two of my cars a month. But I'm gonna get a lifetime experience with Joss. It's not cheap, so I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting my experience, and I'm expecting you to value the client because of that price point. Now, if Joss was 2,995 pounds, so let's say three grand, 10 times what your amount is, Tell me honestly, do you think Mary and John, think of them in your head now, do you think they'd say, you're having a laugh, aren't you? Um, I possibly, yeah. Uh, when you look yeah. at the rest of my business, I think they'd be like, mm, it doesn't match up. There you go. So it's not them. It's what you're offering for three thousand mm pounds. -hmm. Now, so many of us go, yeah, well, I, I, my, my photography's not there. Well, do you know what three thousand pounds worth of photography looks like? And there is uh, out there. There are, you know, there. Mario Testino famously charges sixty-four thousand pounds a shoot. Now I'm sure Vogue probably gets a discount, but <laughs> if you wanted to book Mario, that does not include his team. That is him turning up with a camera, and you need a team with him. So you know, let's say a shoot with Mario Testino costs eighty thousand pounds. Well, do you know what eighty grand looks like in photography? So it's worth going and researching. And if you now, where is where is there? Because I'm always ready with. I would look at you know a house like this. Okay, I just I pull I pull images that that. Um, uh, inspire me all the time so I would I would just look at houses like this and I would say what what do they value how much to put let's just look at this one for example now if they asked me to come and do a photo shoot I'd be saying to them you know this space here wants to be either two big beautiful portraits you know hung separately or one ginormous piece of art if my shoot fee is £95, do you think the people that live in this house are even going to think twice about me? Mm. Now, if my shoot fee is £10,000, but on my portfolio and in my blog and in my marketing, I talk about large statement pieces that are bespokely built to fit the self-built house of your dreams, they're going to go, that's a photographer for me. I can't even look any further. Now, how do we afford her? And that's the question you guys want your clients to be asking all the time. You almost want them to say, I don't care how much it costs, she or he is for me. So the other thing to do from your, um, from your perfect profile that you've just built, you're gonna make a list of where your gaps are in your business, and then you can make a list of how you can market to that client. So going through all the things that we've talked about, if you look down here, mm -hmm. how could you right now make a connection with mary and john and i want at least five because i can see about 20. <laughs> um so well um i would probably want to um have a trade stand at the shows that they like to attend okay so trade stand at competing and spectating yeah okay trade stand that's one um i would um possibly um I'd want to approach their trainer. Um, nice, because if their trainer yeah. recommended you, yeah. that's like a no-brainer, guys. I mean, yeah, if they're training with Carl Hester, then good luck. <laughs> but, you know, no one's out of reach. Um, but if Carl T Hester says, oh, I can't do next Thursday because I've got this amazing photographer coming to update my profile, or, you know, oh, she comes every year to do my portraits, they're going to be like, mm, who's that? Well, if Carl has her... Mm. But and, and any trainer will get that response. Any trainer. So that's two. Uh, so I'd 
possibly want to work with um, the places where they go to lunch, you know, the spas. The spa, yeah. yeah. So even to the point of putting a brochure there, mm -hmm. or maybe you shoot for them and you do a collaboration or you mm -hmm. run a competition together. You know, when you when you start narrowing down, so an, another one would be maybe the magazines. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you could, and I'm just going to put this one in because you really need to think wide with this. They built their own house. How about connecting with the architects? Mm -hmm. Because if the architect specializes in equestrian buildings, think what their um, think what their client network looks like. So if you can connect with the architect, with the dressage trainer, have a trade stand at their comp competition that they're spectating, do a brochure with the local spa, and you're advertising in the local magazines, or you get an editorial in the magazines. That is a lot of ways that Mary and John keep seeing your name, keep seeing the same values that they that they value in their life, and it's a no-brainer for them to connect with you and book you. I mean, you just don't need the training barn anymore. I've told you exactly <laughs> everything you ever needed, ever. Um, and actually, I'm really excited to now crack on and write the rest of my brochure, which is why I went live, because I'm clearly procrastinating <laughs> on finishing my new brochure. Um, before we go, first of all, I have to thank Joss for literally jumping in her car <laughs> and driving to my house to make this live possible. Um, hopefully we didn't cut out halfway through um, and it all made sense. But does anyone have any questions before we go and have a nice cup of tea and chat about how successful yeah. our live was and that I only said one rude thing, which I'm going to take as a huge success. Yeah. <laughs> <I do. laughs> below the average <laughs> it is below the average it is below and and anyone who's joined us on uh, in-person courses knows that the one thing emily and i create and sorry emily isn't here today she's rudely doing other things um one of the things we create is a very safe environment um we're very nurturing in the fact that there are no silly questions i mean joss joined <laughs> us 2018 is it 2018? Yeah. And when she came to her first um, in-person course, you were 25 pounds. Do you oh mind if we say, oh, I'm, I'm going to go there, I'm going to go there. She was 25 pounds for the shoot and it included all images. And yes, Imogen, you've just reminded me, jizz up from her. Um, yeah, Joss joined us at 25 pounds photo shoot and you were shooting and she was shooting some like, impressive people because she had a wonderful network and she had created a really great network equestrian network around her but didn't necessarily believe in herself or her amazing photography skills which anyone who's seen joss's work would agree with me are uh, you know she's got the eyes she's got the talent it's all there we just needed to slap her and bully her into <laughs> pricing herself correctly but within a year of doing that course you were trying was it 195 yeah I, well i yeah i think i went 195 and then i've just gone 395 395 and her average sale now is a thousand pounds a shoot mm -hmm. um and she's been booked so you know our, our next in-person course and you guys knew this was coming mm -hmm. no uh, our next in-person course is april it's the only um three day we're going to do this year because literally emily and i are so busy with our with our own photography businesses um that we we can't host too many workshops because it's really important that our businesses thrive and if we allow if we spread ourselves too thin as creatives you you can't deliver that top high luxury um experience for your clients so our next one is the business and photography workshop it's three days 26 27th 28th of april we're going to cover everything from how to set up a business, market it, how to price yourself, products, in-person viewings, identifying your ideal client, how to market to that ideal client. Plus, we'll be doing three photo shoots and one will be an early morning photo shoot, which is my favourite. Um, and we'll be doing editing, we'll be doing assessing your images, how to get your images PR'd. Um, yeah, so if you're interested now... Three spaces have already gone and there is a limited space. We keep them quite small, even though we've doubled the size of the training barn <laughs> over lockdown. We had to keep ourselves busy. Um, so we can accept a few more spaces, but it's a really small group because when we're out shooting, we get that everyone has a question. Some people shoot manual, some shoot in um, after priority. 
Um, but at the end of the day, when you're sat in front of a beautiful model and a beautiful horse and a beautiful location, you might suddenly go, it's all gone out of my mm. head. I need some help. And that's what we're there for is to go, hang on, take a breath. What do you do? If you cut off the ankles, get out of here. <laughs> uh, so if you've got any questions regarding joining us on that or about this session, do let us know. Thank you, Imogen. 100% recommend. Lovely. Uh, yeah. So any questions, let us know. Otherwise, we will see you maybe on another live that's lastminute.com when this one's rushing to my house. <laughs> so thanks for joining us, guys. Hope it helps you and go and do your profiles, go and do your gaps in your business and then work out your marketing plan. Loads to do. Take care. Bye. Bye.